fact, this lecture is factors and prime factorization. Oh, look, I can't even write prime factorization. And I need to order some pens because uh, I don't want to run out of pens. And don't don't use pens. I use it because pencil looks like crap on on the on this on the screen. So. Um, <laughs> Try to use pen, so pencil, so you can erase it, or if you make mistakes, so it doesn't look lame like that. Okay, factors and prime factorizations. Okay, when we factor, and factor is a big word in algebra. We're going to be factoring for a long time. So when we factor something, we find things, or I want to call these not things, but factors. I guess we could call them factors. <laughs> that multiply up to be the number. Multiply to get a number. An example, let's factor um, 6. Okay, 6 is 3 times 2, and 6 is also, there's another one. 6 times 1? 6 times 1. Now, I know there's other ones. There's 2 times 3 and 1 times 6, but we're just going to go with one direction. So, if, in mm -hmm. other words, if you do, if, if I say 3 times 2, I also mean 2 times 3. Okay, so the right. backwards, that isn't anything different. It's not, this is unique. Does that make sense? Unique? Yes. Three times two and two times three. There's nothing different about that. It's unique. Okay. So, we call six, of course. What is six called? Two things multiplied together? Mm, the product. The product. Very good. And we call these factors. Okay. And a multiply sentence... A multiply sentence of uh, numbers equaling a factor, a product, I'm sorry. A multiply no. sentence of, <laughs> of numbers equaling a product is called a factorization. That's a big word. It's probably the biggest word we're going to look at today. So you can tell everybody you learned a big word today. Factorization. <laughs> okay. So. So three times two is a factorization of six, and one times six is a factorization of six. Okay. So uh, let's look at some other factors. Let's factor um, twelve. Okay, uh, 12 is? 2 times 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. 4 times 3. Let's do the smaller number first. Oh. But I'll write it down. I can write the smaller okay. number. <laughs> and? 1 times 12. 1 times 12. Okay, good. Uh, those are the factors of 12. Good. Uh, pick another number. Don't pick 900 billion 678. I'm not doing nothing that big. Pick a two-digit two number. That happened to me once when I was teaching. I was like, hey, uh, do 1,178,642. No. 16? 15. 15. Oh, okay. 15 is good. Okay. Uh, 1 times 15? Right. There's one more. 5 times 5 times 5? That's 125. Oh, yeah, no, I got that wrong. So three times five. Yeah, not five cubed, which is what you did, because you got cube <laughs> on the brain or something. And square on the brain. I don't know how you jump ahead. Uh, how about a... Okay, so all of these have different factors. What? How about... Uh, how about pick another number? Mm, 21. 21. You like these multiples of three today, huh? One and 21, of course. What else? 
Three and seven. Three and seven. Okay. And uh, one more number. Mm. How about how about eleven? Okay. Okay, eleven. Eleven is one times eleven. What else? Mm, that's it, because it's a that's it. Very good. So one and eleven is special. This is special. This has three factor, three different factorizations. This has two. Actually, it has four. There's another one, but we'll get to that later. This has two factorizations, and this has two factorizations. This has only one because it is, as she just said, that is a prime number. And a prime number What is going on in the background over there? Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> like... Kids are playing downstairs. K kids? Oh, yeah. oh. Okay, prime number has <laughs> only factors one and itself. These are special numbers. People are looking for the biggest prime number. It is, if you were to print the largest prime number they've discovered so far on a computer, on paper, it would take a box of paper, a ream of paper stacked to the, to the room huge number and computers do all that stuff so there's no way that like somebody's brain could actually wrap themselves around about how big this number is huge huge it's like it's like two to the seven seven million it's not two to the seven million i'm just gonna say it's it's somewhere in this size number type that in your calculator and see if it see what comes up uh huge number uh and the the primes that are actually called they're called mercing primes they're special. Mercine.org, if you are extremely nerdy, but you could win a million dollars, so be nerdy, right? They offer this software that runs in the back of your computer. And if your computer finds the greatest, the largest prime number, you'll get a million dollars. It's like playing the lottery. Pretty neat, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the prime numbers? Let's, let's find out the prime numbers. From okay. one to one hundred. Let's do one to one hundred. Do you have? I do not recommend memorizing all of these, but if you know how to find them, I mean that's always a good thing. So we're gonna have a little chart here. One, two, three. Let's see if I can do this without screwing up. <laughs> I know it's really hard. The pressure's on for me to count to a hundred here. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna count to a hundred. Yeah, I know I should have had one of these drawn out already before this video started, but I didn't. You never know if you're going to get this far. <laughs> okay, then we got 12, 22. There's a train. Please bear with it, the train as it goes by. This is found my newfound sleeping pill addiction with the train, you know. And then we got 13... Then we got 14, we'll do 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 20, 33, oh, 43. No, no, you're messing up. Stop! 24, 34, 44, 54. I caught myself. Wait, no, I didn't. 64, 74, 84, 94. Uh, Five. They didn't. I was absent the day they taught how to count to 100 in class. I, I was at advanced math, so I skipped it. Mm -hmm. Advanced kindergarten. Yeah, that's what we'll say. I didn't get to play with dolls. <laughs> uh, 45, 55, mm -hmm. 65, 75, 85, 95, 36, 37, 38, 39. I didn't really post that we were doing this on Facebook. I should have probably, huh? 
56, 66, 76, 86, 96, 47, 48, 49, 50, 57, 67, 77, 87, 97, 58, 68, no, yeah, 78, 88, 98. Uh, 59, 60, 69, mm -hmm. 70, 79, 80, 89, 90, and 99, 100. Now my hand's tired. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to, the first numbers we start off with will be prime. And okay. then when we count multiples of them, they will not be prime. They'll be what's called composite. Composite numbers are not prime. <laughs> That's the best way to define a composite number. It has factors other than one in itself. Okay, so one does not count. One is neither prime nor composite. So I'm just going to just... Uh, so we're going to have two. Let me see if I can find a blue pin for two. Can I find a blue pen? I'd have had one. But, okay, we don't have a blue pen, but we have a yellow. That's good. Two is special. Why is two special? Because it's the first prime number? It's prime. So now we can take all multiples of two off. Four, six, eight, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. All these are multiples of two. And these are not prime numbers. They're composite. Wow! You are so correct. See, I screwed all this up and I'll just end up crossing it all off anyway. <laughs> okay. So, now that we've crossed everything off of the, all the multiples of 2, the next number should be a prime number. And it is 3. three so now let's take ha half the multiples of three are already crossed off so three six nine twelve fifteen nine, eighteen twenty one twenty four twenty seven thirty thirty three thirty six thirty nine forty two forty five forty eight fifty one fifty four fifty seven sixty sixty three sixty six sixty nine 72, 75, 78, 81, uh, 84, 87, 90, 93, 96, 99. So everything now, almost all, everything left is pretty much prime. There's a couple that we still got to cross off. Okay. But the next number is prime and that is five. And this is where we get rid of a lot of them. So every multiple of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay, now, <laughs> now there are only two numbers that are not prime. And I know okay. you know one of them. And they are all actually, they are both actual multiples of seven. All right, we got 77. That would be one of them. Oh, there's three. Whoops. Oh, wow. 77 <laughs> is, yes. Oh, man, that was a big colossal mistake. Yes. <laughs> 77 on my part. Good, good. 70. 77 is a prime number. Yep. But you missed one. You missed a multiple of seven on the way there. They're all multiples of seven. Okay. Seven squared. Since you're on the squared trip and you didn't get it. <laughs> 49 is a multiple of seven. And there's one more. 28. 28 is already crossed off. I couldn't see it very well. Um... It's even. <laughs> well, I see that now. <laughs> How could it be in mean? It might be the number I'm pointing at. The 91. 91 is 7 times 13. 
And now I'm pretty sure all of these numbers are prime. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, even 97 is prime. Okay, so let's write these down so we can. I don't. I by no means expect anyone to memorize these numbers, but you should be familiar with two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. That's probably, uh, well, maybe th under 20. You should know that those are prime. Bigger than this, then yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, 23. Th and these are only the prime numbers less than 100. 100. There's more after 100, of course. I think 101 is prime, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Okay. Uh, 23. 2931. This is a special kind of prime number called the twin prime, and they're trying to find these big twin prime numbers, believe it or not. No. They're always twin like, prime. they're twin because they're right next to each other. Well, 30 is not going to be a prime because it's even, but they're right next to next. There's never going to be three in a row, ever, because one of them would be a multiple of six. No, one of them would be a multiple of three. Like 29, 31, the next one's going to be a multiple of 3. And the one before it's a multiple of 3. So you can't have 3 in a row. But you can have 2 in a row. Uh, 37, which is a... This number comes up a lot in high-level prime number for some reason. Okay. Not that that's important. You don't need to know that to do fractions. Just, just you know, fun facts. Did you miss 43? Fun facts. I did. 47. Uh, 53. 59. Uh, 61. 59 and 61 are twin. Uh, 67. 71. 73. 79. 83. 89. 97. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's, and then, oh, don't forget. Dot, dot, dot. Because they go on forever. They go on forever. <laughs> okay. So why do we want to do these? Uh, prime numbers. Because it'll make it easier when we start dealing with fractions. Exactly. They are. They will do that. But, uh, I'm going to go back to the, to the, to the uh, factorization here. Okay. And I'm going to specifically look at 12. Because I said uh, well, the factorizations of 12 we have are 1 and 12, and 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. And I've taught this class a lot. And no one could ever guess. Enough. There's another factorization of 12, and no one could ever figure out what it is. Off the bat, my screen just turned off. <laughs> No one could ever figure out what is the... it two times two times three? It is, it is. But I don't know. I guess you've you've had me before. You might that counts, I guess. I don't know. It's two times two times three. Yes. <laughs> what is special about this? Hmm, it has more than two factors. Yes, it has more than two factors. <laughs> That that's not what makes it fact special. What makes it special? The factors are all prime. Oh, okay. The factors are all prime. Two times two times three is what is called the prime factorization of a number. prime factorization of a number. Now, most most uh, topics of math have a fundamental theorem. There's a fundamental theorem of algebra, which we'll learn probably sometime before we finish algebra. Probably not this course, maybe intermediate, maybe college. I don't know how far down. 
the fundamental theorem of algebra is. But you kind of have to learn algebra before you learn, like, the real theorem that ties all algebra together. But this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic. I'm going to make it, am I? Yeah. Okay. Is that every counting number greater than 2 or greater than 1 actually 2 has 1 every counting number greater than 1 has a unique prime factorization no two numbers greater than 1 have the same prime factorization. And that would make sense because then there wouldn't be, I mean, only certain numbers multiply up to be one number, you know? Okay, so let's find why these are important, these prime factorizations. Let's find some first. Let's learn how to do that. And to do that, we're going to first, this is a really long lecture. and We're going to need a little break after this one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I know I am. <laughs> I might be speaking for you. We're going to learn some divisibility rules to help us find these. And they're going to be involved. The, they're only going to involve the first three prime numbers. After that, you're kind of on your own. But the ones that I'm going to, the numbers that we're going to work with today are all going to be less than 100. We're not going to do any fractions over 100 today, I don't think. So we don't need any huge divisibility rules. Um, and the first one is 2. And that's supposed to be like a little bar there, I guess. Two. A number is divisible by two. If it is even. In other words, ends with zero, two, four, six, or eight. Okay. Divisibility rules. That's two. I'm going to go ahead and do five because five is just as easy. Five is the easiest one. Uh, a number is divisible by five. If you remember the divisibility rule for five? If it ends in zero or five. A number, do you know how to spell divisible? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The number is divisible by five if it ends... And zero or five. Okay. Three is is, is a fun one. Uh, three is different than the other ones. A number is divisible by three if the sum what does sum mean from yesterday from the last lecture? Adding of two numbers. Adding of numbers of the digits results in a number divisible by three. And I will do some examples to demonstrate three. I, I think two and five are pretty easy. 50 is divisible by five. Right. F 35 is divisible by five. Right. 34 is divisible by two. Mm, correct. Is 34 divisible by three is not so obvious. Okay. By three okay so is 30 that's a good start let's start off 34 is 34 divisible by three well we find the sum of the digits and the sum of the digits is seven three plus four is seven so mm -hmm. not divisible by three there's actually a, a, a symbol for that uh, you could say uh, three divides uh, 12 right if you write it like this, this is this is how fancy ma fancy pants maths people. Three divides twelve. Period. I'm not going to do this all the time. I just math people are really 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 lazy. We don't like to write a lot of stuff. <laughs> Thirty four. Now, if 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 you want to do something that isn't or the opposite or not, you put a line through it. So thirty four, or you would say three does not divide 34 
So 3 does not divide 34. Interesting facts. Okay. Enough of that. Why do we need to know if something is divisible by another number? It helps us find prime factorizations, which is what we're really going to do here. And there's two real methods you could use. You can use a tree method. Uh, or you can use a uh, repeated divisibility method. But, you know, sometimes you just start using these so much that you just know that 24 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. You just do it that many times that you, you already, you know, you're kind of smart onto it. Okay. So I'm going to let Sophie here pick a number here between, we're going to start, all the numbers less than uh, 10, uh, other than 6 and 8 are pretty easy. 9 is 3 times 3. Let's do numbers between 15 and 100. Just pick a number between 15 and 100, and uh, we will find a prime factorization. So find prime factorization. 52. 52. Okay, 52. Good. All right, 52 is even. So we're going to do what's called the, the take out the primes first. And this does not mean divide. I just write it out like this. So I know that 52 is divisible by 2. And 2 divides in, two into 52 is 26. Mm -hmm. And you keep going until you can't use 2 anymore. We're still even. 13. 13 is a prime. prime. Mm -hmm. So 52 is 2 times 2 times 13. All right, good. Give me another one. Uh, 71. Prime. Um, 71 is prime. So 71 is 71. There's no other way to write it. Go ahead. Um, 83. Prime. <laughs> 66. 66. Even. Okay, 66 is a good one. I like 66. Okay. 66 is even. So we divide 2. 2 divided by 2 into 66 is 33. Not even. We move on to 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 is a multiple of 3. So this has to be a divisible of 3. So 3 divides into 33 11 times. 11 is prime. The last number you'll have here is prime. So 66 is 2 times 3 times 11. Okay, let's get some big... I want to do some bigger numbers so I can... So we can use the tree method. Now, I'm not gonna, we're not going to be dealing with fractions that are this big. I did have a class where we had some seven-digit fractions, and I think the guys had so much fun in that class, mainly because I did all the work. It's, it's fun watching somebody else do all the work. Sure. But, you know, <laughs> we were just sitting there like, are we really doing these big, giant numbers? And then some of the people actually got into it. So, uh, And uh, the big number we're going to do is uh, 10,000. Okay. Okay, why did I pick 10,000? Because I know two numbers that multiply up to be 10,000. And that's 100 times 100. So I write it out like that. 100 times 100 is 10,000. Mm -hmm. Now I also know two numbers that multiply up to be 100. Right? 250. Uh, yeah, or 10 times 10 or 2 times. You could use any of them. We'll do 10 times 10 here, and we'll do 2 and 50 there. You don't have, they don't have to be the same. Good example. Okay. But if once one, once the number's prime, you circle it. Because you don't have, you can't break that down any further. 10 is 2 times 5. Uh, 10 is 2 times 5. And 50 is, what do you want to do? 5 times 10 or 2 times 25? It doesn't matter. Let's do 2 times 25. 2 times 25. And 5, and 25 is 5 squared, not 5 times 2. 
Okay, so whatever I circled is the prime factorization. So 10,000 is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 twos, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5s. Is it okay to use exponents? Yes. That is acceptable. However, when we're working with fractions, I recommend keeping it long like this. And again, we're not going to be using fractions with denominators of 10,000 in this class so far. That I know of. <laughs> that I know of. Okay. Are we good on prime factorizations of composite yep. numbers? Okay. 